Now I broke that. I am having... <laughs> what is really going on? Dad, come. I'm going to tell you what. <sighs> Growing up, I wanted to be close to my grandmother all the time. And she was out on the road, so I would watch Coal Miner's Daughter, like, every day to be close to her. And, uh, and how cool was that, that I was able to do that? You know, that, that was pretty neat that I had a, a movie I could watch about her life, I guess, all the time. Um, I was thinking last night, you don't realize until you're of a certain age all of the questions that you want to ask your grandmother and sometimes until it's too late and uh that hit me for some reason i never know really what i'm going to talk about when i start talking right here um this is a moment in the show when i just try to share who Mima was to me and i try to be authentic about it and, and vulnerable and, and just share like who she was as a grandmother, not so much who she was as a singer. <coughs> I don't really know all those facts. Um, when my grandfather passed away, um, I was about 19 years old and she asked me if I wanted to move in with her. And so I moved in with her in her house in Nashville and it was just us. And she says in that time, that's when we became more like girlfriends instead of just grandmother and granddaughter. Now we would spend our days, you would think, being fancy, but we would spend our days going to get chicken pot pies from KFC. <laughs> that was what she wanted. And we'd buy five at a time because she said once you've had hunger pains, you never forget them. <laughs> so she would stock up on those chicken pot pies or we would go to the other side of town <coughs> and get hot dogs from Sonic. <laughs> we went to the Green Hills Mall one time and got her a floor-length mink coat. She said, because she could. I don't know if Paul Paul wouldn't let her go and get them or what, but she was like, let's just go cut her name in it. Never wore it one time. She said she hated it. But she said she went and got it because she could. But uh, she had... <coughs> I'm sorry, y'all. She had, at this time, all of her gowns that she'd ever worn downstairs in this house and so at night we would play dress up we were the same size and so we would get on all those gowns and all those outfits and, and play dress up and after being there about six months she asked me if i wanted to go on the road with her and sing and as a little girl growing up watching coal miner's daughter and wanting to do nothing other than sing with her and be like her and be her i was just Floored. I couldn't believe that this was going to be my life. And so really for the next 20 years, on and off, she let me do that as a job. And she was so giving and so loving <coughs> and so gracious with her stage. And I am so grateful that she got to, she's the reason I met Trey. She's the reason that we get to do this show. She she helped us with this show. She taught me how to sing her songs. She has always supported me doing this. And I'm just so excited that I get to do it for a job and I get to come out here and sing for y'all. The song that I'm gonna do is Honky Tonk Girl, which is the first song that she ever wrote and recorded. It's the first song she ever sang on the Grand Ole Opry. And we just got asked back for the fourth time to sing on the Grand Ole Opry. So here's how. 